Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome back to the Faith Revival. So we've already talked about Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu quite a bit, not because I'm named after him and I love talking about him, but because of the immense blessing we get from studying his life. A man who sets the example in repentance and the implementation of the religion and spiritual discipline. I mean, there's so much that could attach us to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now, there's something about him, many things about him that are very, that are very prominent. One of them is that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was someone that was easily driven to tears, could easily be reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it was a child or it was just some random woman in the street or one of his companions or one of his family members, if someone said to Umar, ittaqillah, be mindful of Allah, fear God, he would immediately uh, be reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was always ready uh, to be reminded of Allah. Now Imam al-Dhahabi has a very interesting reflection on that. He says that with Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, you always notice that his iman is ready to be engaged. He's always ready to cry. He's always ready to, to, to go into these moments. And it's not about the power of the situation, but it's about the mindset of Omar. It's about his zone. So what we see externally is that someone said something and that made Omar cry. But it's not that someone said something and it made Omar cry. It's that Omar internally was already in a process that no one else was seeing. So when that incident happened or that word was spoken, it immediately drove him to those tears. What do I mean by that? Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is a man that's described by the Prophet sallallahu as having this long garment of, of, of faith that protects him, right? Protects him from harm. The Prophet sallallahu also said that shaitan doesn't even take the same road as Umar. Umar always keeps the shaitan out meaning he always is in a state of remembrance of Allah. He's never heedless because heedlessness is what invites the shaitan and Umar would never let his guard down. His remembrance would always be there. And Umar was, you know, because he was always engaged in that remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything pushed him over the top. So he would go looking for moments of crying. When he saw the Prophet sallallahu and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu crying after a revelation of the Quran, after the battle of Badr, he said, Tell me what it is that's making you cry so that I can cry too. And even if, even if it doesn't make me cry, I'll join you guys in crying basically to get the blessing of your crying, right? But I want to cry. I want to be connected to this. What lesson does this have for us? What's the practicality here in our lives? Omar was always in the zone and preparing himself. He was preparing himself for that iman boost. Meaning what? If Omar heard many of the khutbas today, that we would deem as mediocre, and we would say it was the worst khutbah that we've heard, not because of something that the imam, imam said that was wrong, but you know, it was a mediocre khutbah, it was a boring khutbah. Umar radiallahu anhu would probably be crying in the front of the masjid, just at khutbah al haja just at the beginning, ittaqullah haqqa tuqatihi, fear Allah as he deserves to be feared. And all of us would be looking at Umar and wondering why is he crying? What, what happened here? Did he just see a text message or something like that? You know, who texted Umar and made him cry? We wouldn't be able to comprehend it. Because it's not about what the Imam said. It's about the state of the heart of Umar when the Imam said it. Practically speaking, what this means is putting yourself in the zone before the moment that engages your Imam is crucial, is essential. Meaning what? When I'm on my way to Jum'ah, I am going to Jum'ah for the purpose of being reminded. I want to be affected by the khutbah. I want to be touched by the imam. I don't just want to listen to him so that I can critique his khutbah afterwards and speak to people. I want to go there to be reminded. I'm seeking to be reminded. I've put myself internally in the zone. My iman is ready for that spark. All he has to do is give me a little spark. And as soon as he gives me that spark, it will bring about that desired result. When I go to salah, I want the salah to change me. I want it to affect me. I don't just want to check it off you know, on, on my checklist and say that I went to prayer. I'm going there with my iman, ready to be engaged by the salah. When I open the Qur'an, I'm going to the Qur'an to be changed by it. Not just to read you know, my, my section for the day. I want this Qur'an to speak to me. I'm, I, I'm going to it with a certain state of mind. And so that's where the necessity of intention comes in and the necessity of putting your heart in the zone. The Prophet Sallallahu khutbas were very simple. They were not long and elaborate, but the companions were moved by them. It wasn't just because of the one who was speaking, it was because of the hearts that were receiving. 
So prepare yourself for moments. Go to the khutbah with the intention of being reminded. Listen to the lecture, ready to engage. Go to the salah and spend a few minutes on your way to the prayer, thinking about your prayer. It's often about what you do before the act that will determine the quality of that act itself and what impact it's going to have on your iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our hearts to be soft and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our iman to always be in a state of engagement so that when it comes into contact with those blessings, it will be increased by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. See you next time inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.